Hello there. I want to take this time to invite you and your family to join me for the next half hour as we read, we discuss, and we meditate upon the Word of God together. You know, as I travel down this highway of life, and especially since I've gotten older, the one thing that I have discovered, and that is that life itself is very, very precious. And as you get older, you suddenly realize that life is time. And to waste time is to waste your life. And a lot of people, they're wasting their life by becoming mentally lazy. They are wasting a tragic amount of time on the trivial and the temporal, mundane, and the materialistic things of this world. For many people squander countless hours vegetating in front of their TV or their computer seeking only to be entertained. But this is not what God wants for his people. For God wants his people to zealously read, study, and meditate upon his word. For you see, God wants us to be well informed regarding the major geopolitical, cultural, and spiritualistic issues and events of our time. And therefore, Christians must be sober and watchful responding to satanic opposition with faith and firm resistance. For we are told in 1 Peter, the 5th chapter and the 8th verse, Christians must be sober and watchful, responding to satanic opposition with faith and firm resistance. But God can help you and give you the ability to overcome and become an overcomer. For if it were not so, he would have put it in his word, the Bible. For God put it there so that you would know that being victorious is possible. And we have someone who is on our side. For in 1 John, the fourth chapter, in the fourth through the sixth verse, it says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And the spirit of God which will reside in you will give you what you need to become an overcomer in life. For you see, God knows your situation and the devil will try to work through many circumstances, but God knows how you should deal with each and every situation you may face. He knows how to lead and to direct you. He can point the way you need to walk because people may give you the wrong advice because they may not know or understand everything about your situation. However, God understands it, and he will direct you in the right direction. And to receive God's help, you must properly respond to his voice, for God will speak to you and tell you what you need to do. But God will not force you to do anything. He will not force you to serve him. That is is up to you. You must be a willing vessel and respond to God properly. When God does something for you, everything you have and every benefit you receive and even your health is from God 
and you will know it. He has given you whatever talents you have, and when you appreciate those things and thank God for what he has done for you, then he will do more and more for you. And should you fail to appreciate those things and fail to praise God for what he has done for you, then the gifts he has given you will become less and less. But if you acknowledge to God that you appreciate all that he has done for you, then you will receive more and more of God's blessings. And the first gift that God gave to us was his Son, Jesus Christ, given to us for our salvation. And this great plan of salvation caused a great amount of suffering for Jesus Christ that our minds cannot even comprehend it. But Jesus endured it all to give us the gift of eternal life. For in the third chapter of St. John and the 16th verse, it tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when you make the commitment of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will find that you are not concerned about the pleasures of the world anymore. Because Jesus Christ is at the center of at the center of your life. And that's because it was Jesus Christ who died on Calvary's cross for humanity's sins. But the most important thing to remember, Jesus was raised from the grave for man's justification. And this verification is made known to us in the fourth chapter of Romans and the 25th verse who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. And failure to receive Jesus Christ will result in eternal, in eternal banishment from God. But when you make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what a glorious condition it will be to have forgiveness of your sins and peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as it states in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and the 17th verse, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. For you see, Jesus Christ is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other. Jesus Christ is the way. But if you think that there is another way of achieving success and happiness other than through Jesus Christ, then you will be greatly disappointed. But then time has a way of bringing this truth to the forefront. You may find that there are many people who are willing to offer you advice concerning what they believe is best for you. But it's important that you realize that not everyone who comes to you with their advice has your best interest at heart. They may smile in your face, yet all the time they want to take your place. They may be backstabbers. This unsolicited advice from them may come to you in many ways. And because everyone wants to know their future, therefore, they hope that they can plan the best moves to follow in accomplishing their goals. And they may seek these answers in all, in all the wrong places. For you see, when Satan initiates his plan to influence you to follow his advice and plans for your life, he would be more than willing to offer his books on guidance books, books that will show you how to know one's future, such as horoscopes, astrology, 
ESP, and interpretation of dreams. And whether you are young or old, you could easily get caught up in fortune-telling and other occult practices. But even Christians are not exempt from this flaw in their character. For many Christians are searching for guidance. Therefore, Christians should not be so quick to think that everything they see or hear are things from God. Do not easily suppose that dreams, impressions, voices, or revelations to be from God. Now, it's possible that it may be from God or it may be from the devil. Therefore, it may be in your best interest to listen to the warnings that's given to you by the Apostle John, which can be found in 1 John the fourth chapter and the first through the third verse. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Remember that God is the only one who knows your past, present, and future. And he knows your capabilities and your needs. God will not force his will on anyone. So be teachable, sincere, yielded, and watchful, and don't forget God's leading, God's leading, God's uh, leading will be in line. His leading will be in line with the word, his Bible. It's in God's word that the answers to your questions can be found. For in the third chapter of Proverbs, in the fifth and sixth verse, as well as the 32nd Psalm and the eighth verse, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And when you are willing to abide and follow the blueprint that God has designed for your life, you will be successful. And your success will be the result of the decision you made and the action you took, which can be found in the 27th Psalm and the 4th and 5th verses. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me on high upon a rock. And that's the very essence of what my sermon is all about. For the title of today's sermon, The Lord is the Rock of My Salvation. And what I experienced is also a condition that King David of Israel experienced during his lifetime. For this is explained to us in 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, and the 2nd through the 47th verse. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I, 
I be saved from my enemies. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let God be exalted. The rock of my salvation. For you see, building your life on plants and principles which are faulty in nature will lead to a disaster. It's like building a house, and to the untrained eye, the house may seem to be okay, and be ready for the housing inspector to examine it and give his seal of approval. For the housing inspector can see and detect flaws in the design of the house. And under close scrutiny, he may decide that it cannot pass its inspection, for he sees the flaws in the design and the workmanship of putting that house together. Perhaps the untrained eye may not see these flaws and overlook them. And this can also be applied to our lives. When we try to build it on principles which are not in line with God's specifications, despite the time and effort in building the house, it would have all been done in vain. For the building inspector, which in your case would be Jesus Christ, who would be in charge of examining your life to see if you meet God's specifications. And the validity of that statement can be proven by reading 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and the 10th verse, as well as 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and the 12th through the 15th verse. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in our bodies. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. And to those who are not familiar with the dictates and wants of God, these people may seem to be very pious and spiritual in nature, but under close scrutiny by a person who is versed in the word of God, they will see their actions as an abomination in the sight of God. And those actions which are displeasing to God are found in the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy and the 9th through the 12th verse, as well as the 19th chapter of Leviticus and the 31st verse, as well as the 20th chapter of Leviticus and the 27th verse. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritualist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. A man or woman who is a medium 
and who has familiar spirits shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. And as you can see, any disobedience concerning the commandments of God could have far-reaching consequences for you. It could very easily lead to your death, for any disobedience on your part concerning the laws of God would be rigidly enforced. But the most damning action you could take would be your failure to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And such action on your part would result in eternal banishment from God. But when you make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what a glorious condition it will be to have forgiveness of your sins and peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And right now, you can experience the joy of knowing that you are saved and are part of the family of God with your acceptance of Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. And that can take place right now. If you are willing to lift your hands with me and repeat these words, my Heavenly Father, I love you. And I thank you, Father, for loving me. And Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ, who I accept as my Lord and Savior. Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son and was your Son, the Son who came to earth some 2,000 years ago and willingly went to that rugged cross at Calvary and died for me. And it is by his death and his resurrection from the grave and my belief in him as being your son and being my Lord and Savior that entitles me to have eternal salvation with you and to become a part of your family. And I'm making that commitment right now. I'm confessing with my mouth what I truly believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is your son and that he died for me at Calvary. But the most important thing is my belief that he rose from that grave and he now sits in a seat of honor next to you right now, acting as my intercessor. I thank you for Jesus and I thank you, Father, for not giving up on me but waiting patiently for this day when I made the most important decision of my life of accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray, amen and amen. With that declaration on your part, you are saved and you are now a part of the family of God. And our Heavenly Father is a wonderful, loving God who loves you very, very much. He's well aware of everything that's going on in your life right now. And He wants only the best for you and your family. All you need do is simply come to Him and ask, and ye shall receive. I want you to lift your hands with me right now. Heavenly Father, you are well aware of each person lifting their hands right now. It's their way of letting you know that they have faith in you and in your ability to meet their needs with a special miracle that's designed just for them. Whatever the miracle may be, whatever it may be. Now, for some people, they need a miracle in their body. Their body may be wrecked with a, a disease and they may be suffering great pain but you are the great physician and we're trusting in you to touch them in such a way that they will be completely whole made whole by thy Holy Spirit touch them 
and make them whole now in the name of Jesus Christ. And for others, it may be a financial condition. Provide them with the money that they can meet their family obligations and have money for the finer things of life. They are your children. Bless them, Father. Whatever their needs may be, physical, financial, or it may be loneliness, let them know that you are with them always, even until the end of the world. And we love you, Father, and we're confident that you will hear our prayer and answer each and every one's prayer with a special miracle that's designed just for them. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We expect our miracle now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our Heavenly Father heard your prayer, and our Heavenly Father has answered your prayer with a special miracle that's designed just for you. And the only thing that's required of you is for you to simply lift your hands and begin to praise and thank God for your miracle. Hallelujah. And praise be to God. I want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for watching. And also, I'd like to invite you to write to us. We would love to hear from you. And you can address your correspondence to David Woods, Post Office Box 2102, Dayton, Ohio, 45401. And on behalf of myself and my sons, David and Devin Woods, we'd like to remind you, to read your Bible every single day and then pray. And may God bless you and your family.